In this video, I'm going to bring you through my exact advertorial strategy that we use to scale companies to multiple seven figures, up to eight figures and above. And so what I'm going to bring you through in this video is kind of the structure of how to test advertorials with paid ads, what kind of funnel to use, what really has at least worked well for us. And also I'm going to bring you through the types of advertorials that I would recommend for you to test if you know I, I were to you know start my own brand. Now, before we get into it, for the new viewers, my name is Brando from Brandlux Media. We are an e-commerce growth partner. We handle paid advertising, content creation, email marketing, conversion rate optimization. If you feel like you need any help with any of these areas, feel free to book in a call down below, especially if you want to go and grow and, and kind of get your, your, your brand to the next level towards the seven or eight figure mark. With no further ado, let's get right into the video so we can get going. Now, what I'm going to do in this video quickly is I have a quick diagram over here, okay? And I usually show the proof. I usually maybe have like a specific case study, but now that I think about it, uh, we've used this advertorial strategy with you know dozens of clients at this point. We've worked with over seventy clients in in the, in the last you know several several years, and this is a strategy that we've tested um, several times. And we've come up with a, a structure, which I'm going to talk about in just a second down below. But these are just some some of the clients that we are uh, the caliber of client that we are typically. Uh, handling so you know eight figures 10 million a year last 12 months scale companies to thirty thousand dollars a day uh this company is approaching four hundred thousand dollars a a month and of course this was like whatever last year uh this is a client doing a million a month now the reason i'm showing you this is because if you're a new viewer I'm, i want to show you that you know i am qualified to speak about these things if you want to see like the live dashboards go i have all of my other videos i, I show these things so i'm not going to do it right now but these are just some of the, the the caliber of clients that we work with and and the clients that we use these strategies uh for right so first of all we need to understand what is the point of an advertorial the point of an advertorial or uh, advertorial is or listicle advertorial um, is that we want to educate and take a more educational approach uh, towards selling to our client. Now, the traditional uh, way of selling is that you go from an ad and instead of going to this advertorial over here, uh, which is basically an article type of sales page, right? You go to the product page or you go to the collection page or you go to the home page. You go to a, a sales asset, right? Where, where people are supposed to convert, right? Now, with this approach, there's a couple actual um, really advantages i would call them uh when you use an advertorial first of all the prospect has its guards down because they are going from an ad which probably seems like something um uh, in most cases whenever we run advertorials the types of ads that we run are like rhetorical questions or image ads or like non-salesy like videos or demonstration or like not super salesy 50 percent on sale by now it's like very chill very low-key and so whenever they go from here to here and they keep on consuming information, the goal of this advertorial is to give them more information about a specific problem or a solution. So typically, or maybe for to speak about problems and solutions because they're not aware of them, right? So we want to touch three different stages mainly, unaware, problem aware, and solution aware. These three, three to four types of avatar customers. And so what really works well here is that they are basically with their guard down. And what we want to do in this advertorial, and I'm going to show you an example in just a second. So you see it, an example from like an eight or nine figure brand. So you see exactly what I mean by advertorial and how to structure it. Is that within the, ad, uh, the, the article, yes, they consume and they give maybe scientific data. They give a lot of information. They also make sure to, uh, to link different like... Uh, unbiased articles so that the consumer and the reader can actually understand that what they're reading is legitimate and they're, they're, there's no bias. And of course, within the landing page, which once again, I'm going to show you in just a second, make sure to stick until the end. They also add small call to actions, uh, small product sections where they can actually click and buy if they're interested, kind of like ads. And people are like very used to seeing like, you know, those Google ads, where you go maybe on Forbes.com or whatever, and you read your article and then after, maybe not on Forbes, I don't remember, but like these news articles where there's like ads, like Google ads, right? Google retargeting ads. People are used to seeing that. And so it's kind of like not, not something sketchy or new, right? So this is kind of a way to do it. Now, what I liked, and of course, from here, then you can redirect people wherever you want uh, to probably your highest performing sales asset, whether it's a product page, a sales page, a home page, whatever you want. Now, why I love this uh, approach so much 
is that whenever we add an extra level, uh, a, a, an extra layer within our retargeting, or sorry, our, our funnel. So instead of going from ad to product page, we add an extra layer with the advertorial. What we do here uh, is that we add an extra level of retargeting. And for those of you who run paid ads or the newbie, even if you're a newbie, you probably know this, you have a much uh, like a higher likelihood of converting somebody that you're retargeting because they already know, maybe like and trust you compared to somebody that has no understanding or, or knowledge of who you are, what you sell, what you stand for, et cetera, your values, right? And so when we retarget these people, we can retarget them uh, in, in kind of three different, a couple different ways. First of all, we can retarget them to give them even more information. So maybe if if we are, uh, you know, if the retargeting pool is for like a problem aware uh, or like, I don't know, let's just say in this article, we're, um, we're going after problem one and we're talking about problem one. This is problem one. This is what people are doing. This, this is the problem in the market. And then maybe we can retarget these people with like problem two or problem three, or maybe solution two or solution three, right? You first have them read about the problem and maybe you then have, to, you, you have them read about the, the, the solution. Now consider one thing, whenever we add uh, extra layers to the uh, entire sales process, you have to consider that the sales journey, uh, it, it takes a little bit more time for it to be profitable because you're adding kind of like some friction. But this is really good friction because we are educating people and we can retarget them, right? And we, we can literally retarget them with like buy now ads, right? And those ads are typically also gonna convert at higher rates because they have been funneled in into like an educational and informational funnel before they saw the call, uh, you know, the buy now, um, you know, call to action or ad or landing page, whatever you wanna call it. So these are two options. And then of course, the third option, as I told you before, is that uh, you can either go from here to like advertorial two or three or, or whatever, or you can just go from here to then just strictly to like a retargeting to, um, as I just said, to like the product page or the or the sales page. This is like very standard. And so I love this approach once again, because it's very like, you know, it's very kind of a low key way to educate people and, and have them build trust. Now, one thing to consider over here, I'm not sure if I speak about it here. No, I don't. But one thing to consider here is that there's a couple ways to approach an advertorial. The first approach is that you can essentially open up your website. So there's two ways. The first way is like on your website, right? So this is like your main. So basically, basically this would be like www.yourwebsite.com, right? And so this is basically an article that you know, is just published on your website, on your blog, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. The other approach here is like, and I would, I would advise you to do this maybe at once you prove that after you publish it here and it actually works and it's profitable, then you can maybe move forward to this other method. But here, it, you know, you, you can publish uh, your article into like a new domain and you can call the domain, let's just say this is a beauty company and they're selling, you know, menopause. You buy a domain called www.bestmenopauseproducts.com. And so this is basically a completely unbiased, like if they thought this was unbiased on your domain, just wait until they read an article where it's literally not on like a, you know, a spammy domain. And you can also buy like .org <laughs> if you want. You can do like .org and so it's like more trustworthy, etc. And so we're not like scamming people here. Like don't get me wrong, we're just, we want them, if you have a, look, if you have a good product and you're confident about your product, wouldn't you do, and you know that this product helps people, right? Wouldn't you do as much as possible to make sure that you convert more people so that you can actually generally help more people in the world? Of course, that, that's what we're trying to do here. And so we're not trying to be like, you know, slicky salesmen here. We're just trying to be smart. And so bestmenopauseproducts.org, this is a lot more trustworthy. It's a lot more unbiased. And then of course here, we have to treat it as like a, a third party. Uh, kind of like a platform. And so the, the, the article would go, same function, you write your article and then you would link all the way to this other website. So it would go from there, you know, from here to like your main website. And of course it would go like to the, probably the, like the product page over here, right? That's what I meant. Now, hopefully you got this example. One other thing that you can do to bring it kind of to the next level is that you know how you have your Instagram page and your Facebook page? You have to make sure that the, the, the Instagram page and the Facebook page, probably you don't even need Instagram, just Facebook is called like, you know, you name it under the same brand, not, you don't use the, the page of the, 
you know, your actual brand name, you just use the page of the, the new domain that you just bought. You just kind of invent one. Okay, so these are just some, some cool um, uh, whitelisting concepts. Now, these, this, is, uh, this is pretty much the funnel, guys. And of course, it can go more in depth, but I like to keep things simple. And so there's kind of like some, um, yeah, and so basically I talk about it here, that third party high authority website. Yeah, there's also another, uh, another actual um, methodology that works very well. We had a client, for example, that sells uh, a menopause uh, product. He's actually not a client, but whatever. It's just for the sake of the example. Uh, he sells a, a, a product that is for whatever, like a supplement for men people, women that are in menopause. And they have an article uh, from Harvard, right? So the first thing that I would do um, is that I would go to Harvard and because they actually published the, the article and they, um, you know, they generally did a research on the product because it worked and they did like scientific studies. What I would do is I would approach Harvard and I would say, Could, can we promote this uh, with our ads so you get more traffic, whatever, more viewers, viewers and we, we have the opportunity to kind of promote our product thanks to the amazing article that you wrote. Worst case, they say no. If they say yes, and in many cases they can say yes because they literally wrote the article uh, and, and it was their decision, then you can have like, that's, that can really, really work well really work well. The only thing is that you cannot retarget uh, people on um, because you don't have a pixel on harvard.com, <laughs> right? You don't own the pixel, so you can actually, it's a little bit more complicated there, but you're assuming that if you bring people to Harvard, it's even more unbiased. There's really, really a high level of authority. And so people, uh, and of course, you, you make sure that you ask Harvard to include product links. So this is actually a very smart way, and I've seen this work amazingly. Amazingly, amazingly, especially if the, the website that you choose has very, very high authority, like a harbor.com, for example. Okay, now there's three, these are my three favorite uh, types of listicles and articles that I've seen work. Number one is XY reasons why uh, landing page. So, XY reasons why XYZ, whatever you want. And so, another one is storytelling, doing like a, um, uh, this is how uh, Jeremy went from you know, broke to hero or whatever, or to million dollar business. And these are the, the steps that he used or whatever. This is just a random stupid example. And then you have third party review landing page where this is basically landing page where it's probably best to use. Uh, you can use both domains, honestly. You can use whatever strategy you want, but this is essentially like top five products in the beauty industry or top five menopause products. Then you would start with five, four, three, two, one. And of course, the number one, would be your product, <laughs> and of course, make sure that you you outline. Uh, don't don't like don't focus too much on the other products and make them sound so amazing, or else people are actually just gonna go buy it there, right? So you have to be smart about it. Um, and so these are kind of like the three. I want to show you a quick example. Uh, of uh, there we go, and this is basically a, an advertorial a listicle. Uh, um, of humnutrition.com. They are a multi eight figure company. They scale also with advertorials. I'm not sure if they're doing as much advertorials now as when I used to funnel hack them, but this is like a, a great, uh, let me show you another example because this is also, <laughs> it's also kind of funny. Why do my, why do my fart smell so bad? <laughs> Five reasons why your farts smell really bad according to uh, doctors, right? So. These, you, you, we also want to be like creative, okay? We don't want to do something like super kind of like an article that anybody would write. We have to be kind of creative with our, with our headline. This is, remember, the goal here is to convert people. So yes, it has to be informational, but use your copywriting skills, right? Uh, and so this is kind of like an article. It has some images. It has, it has to be very easy to want to read. It can't be like an, you know, an article that has like 3 million words with no spacing. It has to be very user friendly. Uh, and when it comes to like, um, to reading, you know, the well structured images, bullet points. And then what I like here that they do is that I'm not sure if they do in this one. But yeah, here within the article itself, they add like small little um, sections kind of like Amazon or like kind of like the, the side Google ads that I explained before. And this is of course, it tells the product the reviews, how many reviews that it's the best seller call to action, and then what it briefly what it does. And of course, you're, you're uh, showcasing them this product after you spent the entire whatever 1000 2000 words speaking about the problem 
and a potential solution. And then of course you present the solution here, but it's very like low key. If you want it, it's here, you know, feel free to consume rest, the rest of my articles, kind of like sales approach. Now, this is basically the strategy. Let me know guys, if you have any specific question uh, about how this works. Um, if you actually join my, my school community, I have examples of written articles I think between five and 10, I don't remember, where we've actually did templates. Yeah, you can follow a template. My copywriter wrote them, so you can just follow exactly what they're doing. And if you want, you know, whatever, it's 50 bucks a month, you get access to way more resources, including my time, but also these articles um, and, and listicles that I just went through over in this video. Now, this aside, if you wanna, if you are looking to grow, as I told you at the beginning of the video, and you have a brand that is semi-established and you wanna get to the next level, I'm targeting seven to eight figures. I feel free to book in a call. We're offering free audits, of course, if the slots are still open, and you can have a call with me or one of my team members, and then we can see if we're if we still have slots open to onboard other people and other brands. If there's a potential opportunity to do something together, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have other suggestions for other videos. Like, subscribe, link the bell, and see you in the next one. Bye.